So this tutorial is going to be the uh, first example where we're actually using the code boxes in Jupyter, and it's going to be for unit conversion. This is an excellent um, first-time approach, I think, for using a code box. So in the uh, previous uh, video slash note, we explored a unit conversion, and we saw how we can define this, uh, write this number one in multiple ways. And specifically, we will write it using uh, relations between units, for example, feet and meters and so forth. So here, we're just going to jump into it. I have a little uh, introduction in a markdown cell first. But let me go to the first example. And this is a code box. And I have said uh, I'm using Jupyter Notebook with what we call a Python kernel, and that means I'm using a Python compiler. So my script or code is written in Python. You also have the options of using C++ or R. And when you first start up a, a new uh, notebook, you'll be asked what kernel you want to use. And I've been using Python. And it shows up here in the upper right corner. It says Python 3. And it tells me it's using a Python version 3 kernel as a compiler. Sometimes something happens where it's losing the kernel, and it will show nothing up here. And that means when, when that's the case, then you can't run any code, and you'll get error messages. So if you get an error message, or it says it will not compile or anything like that, the first thing to do is to look up here and see if it says Python 3. If not, you can restart the kernel. If you go into kernel here, there's a different options. So you can interrupt it. That is, if you have a program you wrote that's not doing right, and it just sits there without ever doing anything, you can interrupt it or kind of stop it. You can also restart it, and that's the case you might have to do sometimes. Okay, so Python compiler is just a, has just some very basic um, functions built into it. Uh, and for this specific example, we don't need to import anything. So we can go straight ahead and start our programming. So the first thing I'm going to do is to uh, define my number one. And in this example here, I'm going to convert from meters to feet. And we know that 3.281 feet in one meter. So we could write that as that number one as 3.281 divided by one. So that gave us the number one. So that's our conversion factor. So I'm just defining that here. You may notice that I'm writing the one as a decimal point as well. I don't think that's necessary in uh, as a as a decimal number as well. I don't think that is necessary in Python, but it's a habit I have. There are some other uh, computer uh, compilers that will. If you don't do it, they will in, in, interpret it as it being an integer, and then everything else you do after that with that number becomes integers. And that's not necessarily what we want. So for example, if you take 1.4 uh, and divide by 1, we should get 1.4. That's what we want in our code. However, some computer compilers say, oh, well, 1 is an integer, so whatever I'm going to put out is going to be integer. So it's going to take the 1.4, convert into an integer, and that becomes 1. Uh, so this is a way to avoid that just by keeping everything in decimal points, decimal numbers. All right, so the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to ask a user, you, me, whoever using this script, for what value do you want to convert? So enter numeric value. So what we do that is we use a function that is built into the uh, basic Python uh, functions called input. And it will take whatever value that we enter, it will take that input and enter into a uh, a, uh, a variable called value. You can call this anything you want to. I just call it value. Now, I want that value to be a number. If I do not have the float in front of it, it just says input. And then whatever we have here, we, we notice the quotations means it becomes a string. And that's exactly what the input would be. The input would just be a string. It's just a character. So if you enter, for example, 9, it will take 9 as a character. 
But a character is not something you can manipulate through multiplication and so forth. So you can't do anything with it. And that's where the float comes in. So by calling the function float, it will take that character 9 and convert it into the number 9. So now the value is a number. And that's what we want. The next step is to convert it. So we now have a new value. Again, this is just what I call it. I could call it a converted value. I could, you can call it whatever you really want to. I'm going to take that value we input it. We're going to multiply. This is just the asterisk. And we're going to multiply it by the conversion factor. So now we have value times conversion factor. That's going to give us our converted unit value. And I'm going to print it. Print new value. And then say done. So let's try and see what happens here. I'm going to just click on the box. I'm going to do shift enter to execute it. And we get this tiny little box popping up here inside the uh, notebook, which is really nice. And it says enter numeric value. I'm going to say, mm, let's say 40. So uh, 40 meters, how many feet is that? I'm going to hit enter. And it's going to say it's 133.24 feet. Done. Now notice in this code, we have not programmed anything about significant figures, and that is perfectly fine for now. If you want to be a little bit more specific, I mean, we say care enough about it, we could program it such that you also take into account the proper significant figures. However, that is not the scope. So this is the first code um, where you actually have an input and it will print it out. This is kind of cool. Now you don't have to do Google anymore, even though Google might be a lot faster. However, you can now say you actually wrote your own, maybe you didn't write your own code, but you're using a code on your own that you're going to modify, right? That's kind of nice. Okay, let's take a uh, second example. So this is slightly more advanced. I now want to provide some options. Do you want to convert from meters to feet or from feet to meters? So the first thing is to, to do is to establish these two conversion factors. We say we're defining our parameters, the ones that are known to us, some numbers that are given to us. We're defining those first. So the me meter to feet, we already have that one. Uh, I'm just not dividing by one here. I guess I could do that for clarity. Say so this is actually divided by one. Okay. Feet to meter is the other way around, is one divided by 3.281. So now I got established the two conversion factors. Uh, now we're going to provide two options for the user. And as you probably point out here, there's way better ways of programming this here. But I think this one is a straightforward way for people who have not seen computer programming before. So we should print conversion options. Print option A, meter to feet. Print B, feet to meter. So A and B is kind of like the little keywords here. Which one do you choose, A or B? So now we're going to choose our option. So just like we did before, we're going to have a user input. So choose option, but we just want these as strings. So there's no float here because A is a character, B is a character. We just want to keep those as what we call strings. So option is what I store those values in. So option becomes the variable that contains A or B. And then we ask again, what numeric value do you want to convert? So that's just like before. Now we're going to go and convert, but the first thing we have to do now is we have to check which option the user chose. Are we going to convert from meters to feet, or are we going to convert from feet to meters? So if the option, that is, that variable contains the option, right? So option equal, if option is equal to the string A, then we are converting from meters to feet. So if the option is A, our converted value is going to be using the meter to feed conversion factor. And then we print that value. However, if the option is B, then we have to go from feed to meters. And then we print that value. And then we're done. So let's try and execute that. Shift Enter. Let me choose an option. And we provided the option A or B. I'm going to do B because we've done A before. So let's do B. Enter numeric value. Let's do 40. So we are now going from 40 feet to meters. And let's see what that is. It's 12 point, ooh, a big number here. Definitely not significant figures, but 12.19 roughly uh, meters. So we're done. Um, so these are two relatively simple uh, examples of how we can use the code boxes in Jupyter.
Now you can of course make, uh, make this a lot more advanced and what I want you to do is kind of just explore this on your own. Take the code up here, execute them, try with some different numbers, maybe compare to uh, conversion in Google and see how they compare. This should be the same of course. Um, and then as you get more familiar with it, a little bit more comfortable with it maybe, you can go in and you can copy this code into your own code box. This is down in box one here. Copy this code into a code box and then add the option or change it, change the option to uh, convert back and forth between miles per hour and meters per second. You can look up the conversion factor between miles per hour and meters per second. That's perfectly fine. And then you can enter those values, see what you get, compare them to the Google to see if you did your programming correct.